We'll call to order the Douglasville City Council regular voting meeting for tonight, which is Monday, November the 20th, um, 2023. Our invocation will be done. I'm sorry, my computer is not coming up like it's supposed to. It's my turn. Thank you so much. Our invocation will be done by Pastor Darius Elder, Director of Pastoral Counseling and Coaching from the Chapel Hill Church of Douglasville. And after that, we'll have our Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by the Mayor Pro Tem. Please stand for the invocation. God of justice and mercy, we thank you today for your many abundant blessings. Thank you for the gift of life, for the measure of health we need to fulfill our callings tonight, for sustenance and for wonderful relationships. Thank you for the ability to be involved in a useful work such as this, for the honor of bearing appropriate responsibilities and the opportunity to serve the people of our city. We ask that you grant our mayor the various levels of city officials and this assembled council the wisdom to govern amid the challenges and issues of these times. Grant them a sense of the welfare and true needs of our people. Grant them, O oh Lord, a thirst for justice and righteousness and in the confidence of what is good and fitting. Endow them with the ability to work together in harmony even when there is honest disagreement Award each of them tonight personal peace in their lives and joy in their task. We pray for the agenda set before them tonight. Give them an assurance of what would please you and what would benefit those who live and work in and around our great city of Douglasville. It is in your blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, for leading us in the pledge. And Pastor Elder, we appreciate the prayer. I'd like to welcome you to the Douglasville City Council regular voting meeting. This is the City Council regular meeting of agenda items that were official action will be taken tonight on the items that were discussed last Thursday at our legislative work session. If the business you're here for is not listed as an agenda item, there will be ample time under the agenda item comments from citizens and delegates for you to discuss your business. I'll go over a few protocol issues and then we will get into the meat of the meeting. I ask that you to please keep your comments and presentations on a professional level dealing with the facts that are important for this governing body to make our decisions. We will not accept comments that are considered by the chair to be of a personal attack on any individual or group of individuals. If you deviate from that warning, a second deviation will um, result in us turning the microphone off and you discontinue your conversation for this evening. Only one person speaking at a time. Please do not applaud or react to speakers or speak from the audience. Cheer or carry on a conversation when you are at the microphone. We're only required to accept public comments during required public hearings. And if you have a cell phone or electronic device, we ask that you would please turn those off or put those in silent mode until after the meeting so they will not be disruptive. These are how the agenda items will be handled this evening. The committee chairperson will read the agenda item. Then that person or, or um, applicant representing that agenda item will make his or her presentation. Myself and council members will possibly ask clarifying questions um, to help us make our decision as we vote on the items this evening. After that, the committee chairperson will ask for comments from the audience or statements. There is a maximum of 20 minutes for those in favor of the item and 20 minutes for those in opposition, and each person has five minutes to speak. You only have one opportunity to come to the microphone, and before you come, please, uh, before you approach the podium, fill out a speaker card. They're out on the table. There are green cards, but we need your name and address for the record. Uh, when you come to the podium, state your name and address again for the record, and then you have five minutes to talk to us. Uh, this meeting is not a question and answer format. It's the meeting just for us to hear the information, deliberate, and make our decisions. 
Um, any printed materials, please um, give that to our city clerk, Ms. Vicki Acker, to my right. She will make copies and disseminate that information to myself and council members. The meeting will go a little differently than the work session, so it'll go a little quicker. If you have any questions or comments during that time that is open for um, citizen engagement, you can do that at that time. So we do have a presentation. It's a presentation of the 2023 dose of Douglasville Falls Citizens Academy. And we will have our deputy assistant city manager, Ms. Chelsea Jackson, do the presentation for us. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Good You're afternoon, welcome. Mayor and Council, Chelsea Jackson, 6695 Church Street. It is my honor to present to you the eighth graduating class for the Dose of Douglasville Citizens Academy. As you all know, this is a 10-week program to familiarize residents of the city of Douglasville of the city government organization, its operations, and their overall structure. The academy provides residents Oh, it residents with information, resources, and tools to become knowledgeable and valuable community leaders and members. This year's class consisted of 19 individuals. Throughout their time, these individuals, I call them my 19 troublemakers. They're really troublemakers. Um, and they bullet me sometimes. Even today, I've been called the nerd. Someone told me to take off my green sweater as well. Um, <laughs> So they're, and they told me right I was nosy now. as well today. So they're troublemakers and they're bullies, but I've enjoyed my 10 weeks with them. So throughout this time, um, they've created their own budget. They sat before a mock city council to have their budget approved. They were so inquisitive, they didn't even get through the entire budget presentation. So I told them they had to come back next year in order to be able to graduate officially from the class. <laughs> um, the fall 20... 23 class has been the most competitive thus far. Mm -hmm. Even a simple game of code compliance bingo ended with me throwing the whole entire city swag onto the table and just told them it's a free for all. Um, also, it concluded with me telling them to take a week off to think about how competitive they was and to work on their sportsmanship skills. <laughs> The last class, I would say I had the three stooges, but as I said, this class, I feel like I had 19 stooges, 19 troublemakers. Oh so Some would argue that they were not troublemakers at all, but one thing about this class was they was all in this together. This class was the most on time, often arriving an hour early, so I got three hours of their entertaining um, and competitiveness. I will miss Pastor Cameron preaching every time he presented, and I'll miss, miss uh, Dr. Few every time asking whether she lived in a city or county, so I constantly had to remind her that she was a county resident. She just worked <laughs> in the city. Overall, my Tuesdays seemed very short because this class was very entertaining. The one thing I'm most proud of from this class is they would always advocate for many things, whether it's for the deaf community or for green communities. They always ask questions as to how they could advocate and increase their awareness um, around those items. It has truly been a pleasure, pleasure to be with these group of proactive citizens every Tuesday. They were truly dedicated to learning about city operations. Next, I would like to introduce you to one of the graduates who will share their experience. Mrs. Koshel Denegal, she's a Ward 2 resident and has been excited with participating in this academy. So I'll introduce you to Ms. Denegal. Koshel Denegal, 8821 Olympiad Rose, Douglasville, Georgia. Good evening, Mayor, Good evening. council members, and distinguished guests. I'm proud to be here to celebrate the successful completion of our community courses. Over the last two months, we've had the privilege of attending many incredible sessions hosted by a team of knowledgeable and skilled facilitators and talented staff working for our great county. Through this experience, we learned a great deal about the city and its people, we learned that Douglasville is a vibrant and diverse community with a rich history and culture. We also learned about the city's commitment to providing quality services to its citizens, such as public safety, parks and recreation, and economic development. Finally, we learned about the city's commitment to civic engagement with a, ride, with a wide variety of volunteer opportunities and community events. We are proud to call Douglasville our home. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our facilitators for their dedication and commitment to helping us achieve our learning goals. Your guidance has been invaluable in helping us learn and grow. I would also like to give a special thanks to Chelsea who coordinated this program and has also been there to answer our questions and concerns. 
Without her hard work and dedication, none of this would have been possible. Congratulations to my peers for successfully completing these civic courses. Let us continue to use the knowledge we've gained to make a difference in our community and help make work easy for these hardworking professionals. Thank you. Thank you, you Koshel. With that being said, Mayor and Council, I would like to introduce you to the Fall 2023 Dose of Douglasville Citizens Academy class. The following individuals have completed all requirements and classes, and as I call your name, please come down to the front and receive your certificate from City Manager Marsha Hampton to my left. Tracy Antoinette Crooks. Kiera Joyce Tate. Deneen Pope. Jasmine D. Moore. Ariel Dunnan. <coughs> Teresa Hinton. Charlene Tillman. Gestacia Cockrell. Terrell D. Cooper. Dr. Richard Dean Few. Monique D. Simmons. Koshel T. Denegal. Claudia Elbert. Sandra Oregio. Eileen Oregio. Cameron Anderson. Willa Strong. And Sylvie Johnson. and Gretchen R. Bailey. Mayor and City Council, I would like to present to you the 19 participants for the Dose of Douglasville class. As I mentioned, they completed the requirements and all the activities that were set upon them. I also said that there were 19 troublemakers and bullies, and one of them <laughs> just looked at me and said that they had another presentation, so I will step aside and let them do so. Oh, they have another presentation. <laughs> she said we're not. Madam Mayor, it gives us great pleasure to have the opportunity to thank our facilitator, Ms. Chelsea Jackson, for all of her, should I say, leadership and for her, her guidance. This has been a wonderful experience and we're very pleased the fact that our entire class was able to complete. So we would like to bring up Ms. Jackson to say thank you so much and please accept this small token of our appreciation. <laughs> okay, I won't call them troublemakers. <laughs> um, mayor and council, I just want to let you all know that there will be a reception following the mayor and council meeting in the ballroom for um, all the graduates as well as for you all as well. So thank you so much. That concludes our presentation. And um, if the graduates would come around to take a picture in the front with mayor and council as well. 
Thank you. And as you are coming, we want to say thank you, and I'll open up for any um, of the, uh, my colleagues to uh, comment as well. But thank you so much for sacrificing your time for 10 weeks, giving of yourselves, your, and taking away time from your families and your personal lives. Thank you so much for investing as citizens in this community. You helped to make Douglasville uh, what it is. And, and we really appreciate your time and your efforts to come and learn about the community. So thank you so much. Any other council members? Councilman Estes. Um, I, Dose of Douglasville is one of my favorite programs mm -hmm. that the city does, and I'm so thrilled to see it growing each year with more and more citizens participating. Thank you each very, very much for doing this. Um, you make our jobs easier by, by getting more informed and mm -hmm. involved, so please keep it up. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Nessus. Any other comments from council members? Oh, oh, council member Nicole. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just would like to piggyback off of Councilman Essie's. It is so wonderful seeing this program grow over the years and watching the residents get involved. And I personally really love it when I hear someone say that they live in War II because that's my ward as well. But please, <laughs> like I've seen so much chatter about it on Women of Douglasville as well. And please share it with your friends. Tell them to come and join in in the fun next time, please. Thank you all so much. Councilman, yes, sir. Councilman Adams. I just wondered if this would also be considered the best class. No one mentioned that. <laughs> the best class ever. No one mentioned that. <laughs> Am I with the wrong group, Ms. Chelsea? <laughs> the best class. Okay. okay. Just say it. Congratulations you. to each of you. Thank you, Councilman Adams. Mayor Pearl, Tim, you have anything? Sure. Thank, thank all of you for participating. You guys are... are not just the, the roots of our, our government here, but you're the roots of our civilization. <laughs> Your willingness to participate and step out, and that really means a tremendous amount to us. And, um, and it's, it's, good, it, it's, it's really great to hear that you're all good troublemakers, because we need more good troublemakers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Councilman Watts, do you have anything you just want to say to Coach? Just uh, the key for, uh, I think, any city to be um, a great place to live, work, play, is the citizens and folks that are willing to get involved and and do more for the city and and for themselves. And I just appreciate y'all being a part of this. And thank you, Ms. Jackson, for uh, keep keeping up. Heard the you. cats. Okay, you all to come around and take a picture. We applaud you. Thank you so much for your time. people to come over on fill in on this side um, let's see all right Cameron can you can we get some more can this can the front row come up a little bit so that we can and then Cameron could you maybe like would you mind like sitting down in front um, Uh, Councilman Estes, could you come stand right here? Um, Councilman Miller, can you come this way? Perfect. Perfect. And then can we get you in the pink to come this way a little bit? Shift a little bit. Perfect. And can we get these three to shift this way a little bit? Okay, I think that's everybody. All right, on the count of three, one, two, three. One more, one, two, three. And one more, one, two, three. All right, thank you.
Very good, very good. For some of our citizens to clear out. Drive, yes, sir. Yes, oh, he's a coffee. All right, so we are finished with our presentation of our fall uh, 2023 dose of Douglasville Fall Citizens Academy. We'll move on to <coughs> item number five on the agenda, which is the approval of the agenda. So I'll open the floor for a motion uh, for adoption of the regular meeting agenda for November 20th, 2023. So moved. Thank you so much, Councilman Nestis. I have a motion to adopt. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Adams. It's been probably moved and second to adopt item 23-455. Do we see any additions, any additions um, deletions, corrections to um, the approval of the agenda? Not seeing any. All those in favor of approving this item, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. 23-455 is unanimously approved. We'll move on then to the approval of the minutes. I open the floor for a motion to approve the minutes of the November 2nd, 2023 Legislative Work Session and minutes of November 6th, 2023 Regular Meeting. Open the floor for a motion to approve. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pell. Tim, I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Estes. It's been probably moved and second to approve item 23-456. Do we have any additions, concerns, comments, or any concerns about the minutes for the meeting? Thank you, I don't see any. All those in favor of approving item 23-456, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. 23-456 is unanimously approved. Now we will move on to the on the floor for a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So Gentlemen. moved. Thank you, I had dueling. <laughs> Ms. Uh, City Clerk. Mr. Adams and Councilman Estes, is that your second? Second. Thank you. It's been properly moved and second to approve the consent agenda as presented. Do we see any corrections, deletions, or any concerns as it relates to the consent agenda? I don't see any. All those in favor of approving this item, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. 23-440 is unanimously approved. We'll move on to the next committee, which is Economic Development Committee. That's chaired by Mayor Pro Tem, City Council Member Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business under the Economic Development uh, Committee at this time. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. We'll move on then to Finance Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Mark Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We You're have um, four items tonight. Yes, sir. We'll begin with item A, and that's to authorize the mayor to sign a change order, PCO number two, with FS Scarborough LLC for the Hunter see, Park Walking Trail down. Improvements back, Project for repairs of the park stormwater system and in the amount of $106,000. $694.68. Miss mm -hmm. Alicia Mann is here to help us with that. Miss Mann? Alicia Mann, Project Manager, 6701 Church Street. Um, as a recap from Thursday's meeting, uh, mm -hmm. we've encountered a failed stormwater system over at Hunter Park when we were working on the new walking trail. Mm -hmm. um, and what we gathered from that is we got, we encountered sinkholes and we just, just, well, staff saw the damage that the failed stormwater system had caused, mm -hmm. um, caused sinkhole, sinkholes right under the trail as well as across the street. So we went back to the engineer of the project who gave us a new design on the stormwater system. And um, what we have today is change order two, which is the upgrade for the entire stormwater system. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Mann. Um, this is going to be paid for out of splash, is that correct? That is we correct. We do have sufficient funds. <clears throat> That is correct. In the splash account still for the Parks and Rec. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, since you were not here on Thursday, I'm going to ask specifically if, if you had any questions or comments concerning this item. Uh, no, I'm, I've been looking over the breakdown on the cost, and it seems to be in order. So. Okay. Thank any you. others? Madam Mayor, did you have any no, additional sir. questions? Anyone else? Mm -hmm. If not, um, if not, then I'll make a motion that we approve this item, item 23-449. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? 
Thank you, Councilman Watts. It's been probably moved and seconded by the chair and Mr. Adams and seconded by Councilmember Watts to approve item 23-449. Do we have any concerns, questions, or comments as it relates to this item? Any additional? Not seeing any. All those in favor of approving item 23-449, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. 23-449 is unanimously approved. Thank you, Madam Matter. You're welcome. Item B. Mm-hmm. Authorize the mayor to sign change order 18 under the agreement for construction of the town green with Raylin and Associates Incorporated for additional sanitary sewer line testing. Ms. Mann is also going to assist us with that. Alicia Mann, Project Manager 6701 Church Street. Mm -hmm. What you have before you for change order 18, um, just a little bit of a recap and background from last week. WSA provisionally accepted Raylin's new installed sanitary sewer system. Um, this preliminary acceptance was granted before the completion of the curb gutter and final pavement. Mm -hmm. This allowed Raylin to divert waste and sewage down a new sewer line um, so they could start dismantling the old system. Um, since the new sewer line had to be in service to keep everything flowing, there was a testing that had to that WSA had to do, which was the provisional acceptance. After Rayland finished all their construction, which included the curb, gutter, and pavement, it required a new test um, to ensure that under the fully installed conditions, um, all work done over the pipes was substantially, um, the integrity and functionality of the sewer system was, was good, could sustain um, the work that needed to go through the sewer system. Um, and this is just uh, the item to essentially reimburse Raylan for the additional sewer testing required by WSA. Thank you, Ms. Mann. Again, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, did you have specific questions about this item? No, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, they do seem to have the proper backup and the prices do seem to be in the proper range. We had, we had extensive conversation mm -hmm. about this on Thursday night. That's the reason I wanted to ask you specifically. Other questions or comments? Coach? The, we, the, this will come out of the contingency, right? Uh, yes, this is payable out of the contingency on that project. Is that correct, Madam City Manager? Okay, that's what I thought. Yes. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Ms. Mann. Seeing none, then I make a motion that we approve item 23-447. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Miller. In. It's been properly moved and second to approve item 23-447. Do we have any additional um, conversation as relates to this item? I don't see any. All those in favor of approving this item, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. 23-447 is unanimously approved. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We'll You're move welcome. on then to item C. Uh -huh. Authorize the mayor to sign a fee proposal with Comprehensive Program Services Incorporated for a catering kitchen addition at the Douglasville Town Green in the amount of $120,000. Ms. Chelsea Jackson is here to help us with that item. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you, Councilman Adams. Chelsea Jackson, 6695 Church Street. Um, as mentioned on Thursday, this would be for CPS to manage the catering kitchen project. The catering kitchen project and future expansion area would add a catering kitchen on the second level of the Douglasville Town Green, as well as add an ADA accessible restroom and storage space on the third level as well. Um, also, as mentioned, this will allow the city of Douglasville to have five caterers, a catering list, that will be able to use that warm kitchen on a second level, which you know that's an event space that holds about 300 people as well. Um, the sole caterer for concessions currently is Proof of the Pudding, and they have the license to operate that kitchen on the first level, and so this would allow, like I said, the five catering lists for the second and the third level and a future ADA expansion and storage space. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. I know that's something that many of us had mm -hmm. been uh, promoting and hoping for uh, mm -hmm. as far as the catering list, approved list. Can you give us, just as a sidebar, can you give us any idea of where we are in that process as far yes, as choosing sir. those caterers? Yes, sir. So um, <coughs> August of this year, we actually went through an RFP process to solicit for five caterers. We only received two um, caterers, caterers back. We believe one of those reasons was because we did not have a warming kitchen in that area to allow them to actually, you know, prep the food and whatnot in that area. Um, so we plan on in January to solicit for bids again so we can have a complete list of five caterers. With the new, uh, the new catering kitchen in place? Yes, sir. Sounds good. Okay, thank you very much. Questions, comments concerning this item? 
Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. This one I do have some questions for. This is basically we're hiring CPS to continue doing what they've been doing for the town green. That's correct. Um, for this uh, additional uh, facility that we're adding on to the um, tower. Um, what they're asking for, uh, they're, they're expecting the design to take four months and the construction to take six months. Is, um, where did we get the estimate for both of those numbers? Where did, do we know where that came from? So the estimate came from um, CPS. He's current, um, Steve Morrow, he's currently the project manager, so he worked with Ray Lynn as well as with TSW on an estimate, uh, estimate of how long it would take for the scope of work. And are we, let me see, I, I can see the wording on this. Are we putting this as a fixed fee, the 120, or are we paying them at the rate? Because those seem, I mean, I think those are conservative estimates for both timelines. The, I mean, it's not a very big project. And the, the four months to design that seems a little excessive, I will say that. Um, if it's design, if they finish it in two months or three months, are we going to be owing them $60,000 for that portion? Are we only going to pay them on the per month? We payment? would only pay them a monthly rate. And that's how it has been um, throughout the duration of the town green. They bill us monthly um, as they do the work. Okay, so this is this is a rate, not a fixed. I just want to make sure of that. Yes, okay. sir. Um, and they are charging more for the design portion, which is interesting. But I, I can, uh, well, I can live with that, I guess. I'm good. We did discuss that, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Miller, on Thursday night as to uh, how they came up with an idea of how long it would take to retrofit and to uh, then improve with that addition. And uh, he, he really anticipated it would be more like three months total. Okay. So Good. we would be paying on a monthly basis Good. and not, we're not tied to that total fee. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Others? Anyone? Okay. If there are no other questions, we'll move forward to that item 23-450. Make a motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Estes. It's been properly moved and second moved by the chair, Councilmember Adams, and second by Councilmember Estes to approve item 23-450. Do we have any additional conversation as it relates to this item? I know, um, Mayor Pro Tem, that was a fair question, and Councilman, um, the chairman answered, and Mr. Um, Morrow did say that was a, a generous time frame. They probably were finished beforehand, but they just wanted to make certain that there was ample time if something were to occur whether wise or, or any other concerns. Okay, not having any other conversation, all those in favor of approving this item, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. 23-450 <coughs> is unanimously approved. Thank you once again, Madam Mayor. Then You're we'll welcome. move on to item D. Yes, sir. Authorize the mayor to sign amendment number 12 <coughs> with Tunnel Spangler and Associates Incorporated for design services for the addition of two stories to the west side of the existing event tower at the Douglasville Town Green in the amount of $162,600. Once again, Ms. Chelsea Jackson. <clears throat> Thank you, Councilman Adams. Chelsea Jackson, 6695 Church Street. Um, previously mentioned, of course, this would be for TSW um, to do the landscape architect work as well as schematic design, design development, um, grease trap relocation, um, and to develop the construction documents for that expansion <coughs> of um, the warming kitchen as well as the ADA compliant restroom and the storage space. Um, of course, Last week, Councilman Adams did ask for us to go back to TSW to ask for them to look at their numbers again. They did, um, and happy to say that they provided an updated estimate. Um, it was about $40,000 lower. If you all remember on Thursday, it was about $202,000. Um, today's amount is $162,600. I think we had a pretty good weekend, don't you, Ms. Yes, Jackson? Yes, we did. <laughs> Save 20% just by asking. That's right. Mr. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. I think you specifically had questions about this item. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, that was when I first saw the number at uh, two hundred thousand dollars. My quick um, math told me that that's a twenty percent fee. My understanding is the estimate was about a million dollars for the construction, so two hundred thousand would be a, a twenty percent fee, which I've never heard of in, in my professions. Um, so that that will be definitely pushing that, except when you're getting into very very high end interior design where you're specifying every you know t possible finish in, in, in a high-end residence or something you might push it to 15 to 18 percent 20 percent is is really uh, we're now at 16 percent so it's still high but um at least it's within the realm i guess of you know, it's on the it's on the height of something it's not outside the range um 
I would be curious to know, though, if they uh, is anyone here from representing them today? No, sir. They were not able to be with us today. It would have been good to know what was driving the high. You know, I, I also understand that the smaller the project, the higher the percentage fee is going to be. Typically, that's just simply the way it works. So, if you, you know, a million dollar project is going to have a higher percentage than a twenty million dollar project. Um, but even again, a, a million dollars is is a smallish project for a city, but not that small of a project. Um, I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I wouldn't be. I would have been curious. Do do they need a, do they need a decision right away on this? What we had actually discussed uh, and asked for uh, would would be only that um, Madam City Manager go forward with the site survey, which of course she's authorized to to mm -hmm. sign the check for that amount of money easily, mm -hmm. uh, and then we could have any amount of discussion that we needed to. But I understand in our discussion on Thursday we needed to get that started. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in, in reply yeah. to your concern, I, I totally agree with you. But but I will say that you have the contractor now coming back to um, to do a task that had we known we could have had done as we went. Mm -hmm. So now they have to come back and regroup and start over. So I I would have assumed uh, sort of like a remodeling project. Uh, you're going to have some tear out and demo. And, and so, then the construction cost doesn't concern me as much. That's, that's I understand. Say that, that that's not an issue. And I also, I understand the. The necessity of getting the site survey going, that's certainly perfectly yes. fine. I think one of the con one of the things that I was told was because there's additional there's some additional items in there outside the, the typical ra range, which includes the site survey, the grease trap allocation, um, which actually on their contract are, are some of the smallest numbers in it. So I, I have no problem with those numbers. They're actually the tiniest. Um, I think uh, one of the complications is that the grease trap is actually <coughs> located where it was supposed to be, mm. but now it could potentially be uh, in the way of the stacking of that next uh, addition. And of course, we want it to look like it was planned and someone won't really notice it's an addition. Uh, the other thing is that we plan to open, and I want to make sure that we let the public know, plan to open the park on December 1st. Is that correct, Ms. Jackson? That is correct. We plan and to open it on December 1st, and we won't close it. We so will this not would... close it again. So they'll have to work around mm -hmm. the construction and also allow it to be open safely for our citizens. Mm -hmm. Well, again, the, the architect's work should have all be, should all, for the most part, be done before then. Yes. But the question: Are we still are we using Ray Lynn for this? Yes. So why is there bidding and uh, why is there a bidding fee? So the bidding would be for the actual materials um, as well as the kitchen equipment. We did the same. We bid it out for the quick kitchen equipment that's on the first level in the concession kitchen. Um, and then one of the things that decreased with the cost mostly is um, once Steve spoke with them, the average amount of time was, would be six months. And then they went back and talked, and they said four months would be um, admin went from six months to four months, which decreased that cost. Okay. The, um, and also, I, I do understand that if they're going to be, you've got subcontractors bidding and there's going to be RFIs that have come, that may be an area that, that we also look at. There's a little bit of a little bit excessive is under bidding and permitting because you've already got the, the GC is in place and the permitting is, I presume, has already been done for this project. No, you know, but but you, you're, changing, you're, you're changing the project. You're changing are, we, are we going through the, uh, the, the permitting process? It would be a different okay. permits for this. Yes. Okay, they're not, they're not including this under the original permit. No, no. Okay. Um, I don't know why we can't do that, but that's up, that's up to the city. Um, that's an administrative decision. Um, okay. Yeah, look, look, I have no problem moving ahead with the first part of the, you know, and if, if anybody else wants to. Um, well, we, we've hashed over it on Thursday. Okay. I mean, we seem to be um, pretty much in agreement with, with, but with the number that we had here on Thursday night. We did not, did not want to move forward, and I knew you wanted the opportunity to discuss. So in... Uh, reply to um, Mayor Pro Tem's point. Anyone have any other comment or question concerning the item before we move forward? Yes, Madam Mayor, go ahead. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. The comment is that um, I appreciate you um, making the recommendation for uh, them to sharpen their pencil and for them going back and for staff um, assisting so that we can have a, a reduction in 20% of the project as well. And from my understanding, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, that um, the subcontractors, materials, all of that, if we were not to move in an expedited fashion, but just in a, a pace that would keep up with having it completed before we open back up and not rebidding, mm -hmm. we could be open up to a new, you know, a whole new team to come in outside of Ray Lynn. Uh, yeah, no, that's, I, I have no problem with any of that. It's that just makes totally sense. I, my, my concern is, again, is on the design uh, uh, and, and 
CA side, mm -hmm. on the architect side, which is, you know, that they're charging a, a certain amount for bidding and permitting, which they've already gone through. And mm -hmm. oftentimes you do, you sometimes pad that number a little bit when you're working, into a, working in a new jurisdiction mm -hmm. and you don't know the process. And since they've already had this uh, permitted once, you know, it's already pretty well. I think I don't think the city's going to have any many issues in terms of getting this repermitted. Um, so I'm just trying to want, I'm just trying to wrap my head mm -hmm. around where what the seventeen thousand dollars is going to be going toward, mm -hmm. other than maybe a handful of RFIs. Right? That, that, that <laughs> was the number that also jumped out at me again. I don't I don't have any question or issues with the construction side. I understand yes, what sir. needs to happen but the there. Yes, But the administrative, the, the, the architectural, the, the architectural side is is my problem there. But if the council's already discussed it and is willing to move forward, then you know I can sit down and shut up. No, Anyone good. else? No other comment or question? I think that the uh, staff has done a great job in this area. Uh, able, I'm, I'm thankful that we were able to retain the same contractor to come in and then mm -hmm. do a retrofit. And of course, uh, after those three concerts that were done in the fall, uh, this is the information that they've gathered uh, in order to, uh, I think, maximize the experience that our mm -hmm. public has and those people that may come in and rent the space and, and want to have another nice. caterer. I'm, I'm glad for that part of it, that mm -hmm. we're going to be able to actually go that route with this, uh, with these improvements in our city. Uh, if there are no other questions in, I'll make a motion on item 23-451 for approval. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Estes. It's been properly moved and second to approve item 23-451. We've had some lengthy discussion. Do we have any other concerns, comments, or um, conversation as it relates to this item? I don't see any hands. All those in favor of approving item 23-451, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. 23-451 is unanimously approved. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That's all that we have tonight under finance. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, and we appreciate the comments staff um, from Ms. Mann and Ms. Jackson during the presentation as city manager. We'll move on then to Housing and Community Affairs Committee. Um, Council Member Adams, I believe you're the vice chair for this one as well. Are you? No business, Madam Mayor. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Legislative and Intergovernmental Committee. Uh, Mayor, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, do you mind taking this no on problem, committee? Madam Mayor. That there's no business tonight under the Legislative and Intergovernmental Affairs Committee. Thank you, sir. Personnel and Organization Committee, chaired by Councilmember Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business tonight under Personnel and Organization. Thank you, sir. Planning and Development Committee, chaired by Councilmember Mark Adams. We have no business tonight, Madam Mayor, under Planning and Development. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Public Improvement and Beautification Committee, chaired by Councilmember Nicole Miller. Madam Mayor, we have no business tonight in Public Improvement and Beautification. Thank you, ma'am. Public Relations Committee, chaired by Councilmember Howard Estes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The PR Committee has no business this evening. Thank you, sir. Public Safety Committee Vice Chair, Councilmember Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business tonight in Public Safety. Thank you, sir. Recreation, Culture, and Tourism Committee. You're the chair is that, uh, for that committee as well, Councilmember Watts. Yes, ma'am. Uh, no business tonight under Recreation, Culture, and Tourism. Thank you, sir. Technology Committee, chaired by Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, City Councilmember Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. There's no business at this time under the Technology Committee. Thank you, sir. And would you please take the Transportation Committee for me as well? Yes, Madam Mayor. There's no business at this time under the Transportation Committee as well. Thank you, sir. Um, we have other business. It is to adopt a resolution in support of the International City County Management Association's annual conference, which is, it seems like a long way away, but our city manager tells us it's very competitive, and if we will send a letter of uh, support, it would help and go a long way for the convention uh, for 2028, 20, 20, uh, 2029 in Atlanta, Georgia, our city manager. Ms. Marcia Hampton. Yes, ma'am. The Georgia City County Managers Association is looking to um, solicit support from um, local cities within the metro area for the metro Atlanta area to host the International, Con City, uh, International City County Managers Association Conference. This conference usually brings over 5,000 city and county managers across um, not just the United States, but it's also an international conference as well. So um, I'm asking uh, you all to provide that letter of support on behalf of the city of Douglasville to that organization. Thank you so much, city manager. It's uh, kind of like the Olympics coming to Georgia. Do we have any comments or concerns from council members? If not, then I will um, open the floor for a motion to approve item 23-454. So moved. 
Thank you, Councilman Adams. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. It's been properly moved in second to send this letter of support um, and approve item 23-454. Do we have any additional concerns, comments, or questions as it relates to this item? I don't see any. All those in favor of approving, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. 23-454 is unanimously approved. Now we'll go for uh, updates from our city staff. Our city attorney, Mr. Joel Dotson. No, business. Thank you, sir. Um, our police department. No business, um, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Our city manager, this department, Ms. Hampton. Um, yes, ma'am. Just to remind you all, I sent you all an email on um, regarding our 2023 uh, state delegation meeting that's coming up on December 8th. If you all have any topics that you all would like for me to include for staff to start researching. If you can get that information over to me as soon as possible. I do plan to, on November 30th, to have an item on the agenda just to share with you all what um, items we're bringing forward. Um, of course, there'll be items dealing with housing, transportation, and then our local option sales tax negotiation and service delivery. So those are the main three topics I currently have right now. If there are others, uh, please let me know. And just that um, you all have four council meetings before the end of the year. And there are a few employee events that Kristen will include in your information she sends to you on Friday, but we are winding down the end of the year and uh, just kind of a heads up, you all have completed all of your um, goals for 2023. We are completely done. We just take the rest of the year off. <laughs> you all can, you can, you can, yes. But we are completed with your goals for 2023. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, City Manager. You also solicited for council members to uh, bring forth items for our, um, not retreat, our workshop, work session in February that we have every year. Okay. And if you all can get those to me as well before um, we close the year. Typically, um, staff is busy pulling together that information presentation. So if you saw what I sent you, we have a robust list of uh, topics that we are discussing, some major things, particularly related to capital projects that we are currently actually underway, that we're capping off, and then high priority decisions that you'll have to make moving forward. Um, just always reminder of that $4.5 million invoice that we will face in January 2024. Ooh -wee. Yes, ma'am. And for the council members that are being um, reinstalled or sworn, sworn, have to be sworn in. Our city clerk has given us documentation for us to confirm who will do the swearing in ceremony for us, if it's a judge or whomever. So we need to turn that in by the end of the year, Ms. Acker. By December 14th. Oh, by December 14th. So we have about a month to uh, secure uh, the judge or whomever um, judicial person you'd like to do the swearing in. Yes, ma'am. And Ms. Um, the clerk's office has sent you a detailed list of save the date items. Um, if you all would just um, be mindful of those, that includes the uh, strategic um, planning session date, um, all your trainings that you have coming up at the beginning of the year. And just keep in mind that January, we, we have those staggered dates. <laughs> we have those staggered <laughs> dates because of the New Year holiday. So um, please keep that in mind. January will be fairly busy. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, city manager. Someone's over there short time. I don't know what they're doing on the side, making bunny faces or ears or something. Oh, <laughs> oh no, not a lame duck. Okay. All right, do we, any other comments, city manager? Thank you. Uh, comments from citizens and delegates. Do you all have any comments or concerns? We have a couple of citizens. If you'd like to come forward and um, speak to us, you have five minutes to talk to us about any business remain to the city. No? All right. Well, not having any other business. Oh, yes, sir. I apologize. No, I like the officials. Right. One quick comment, Madam Mayor. I yes, mean, sir. You and I saw some rather interesting presentations at the, at the National League of Cities this we past did. weekend, including some that I hope we don't in, uh, yes. bring to the city, <laughs> Douglasville, which most notably about AI and, and, mm -hmm. and its ubiquitousness, which has seemed to be becoming very common. Mm -hmm. A lot of cities are adopting artificial intelligence as part of their interaction with with the community, with citizens, and I'm. I just want to express my concern over that because yeah. I think there, there's a lot of good that can, can be done with it, but I think there's a lot of bad that can be done with it and a lot of um, misunderstandings that could mm -hmm. happen out of that. But I think it, what a lot of people were missing, would be missing is that human touch, that you, you know, yes. the ability to interact with the people you represent. You're not, we don't farm that out. And right. I think farming it out into, into a computer is, is, is troublesome. Yes, sir. But the one technology that might be 
consider positive, not AI, is I went on the tour for autonomous cars that were driving through the community for downtown Atlanta, and they were talking about sanitation tr trucks having, you just plug them in and no, pers no people come and they'll pick up your trash and public safety. I'm they were saying that, so cars. I don't I, know about that. I know how people drive. I, I, I'm all good with cars. <laughs> so I don't, appre I don't agree with the one for the police department. Maybe sanitation, but again, will it tell you if a little kid is by the trash can, or it, will it just pick up the little kid in the bike and not know the difference like a person would know if it's a, a computer for your sanitation truck? Ugh. Save cities money. Yes, sir. I was just going to say that that's another area that we might not want to lead the way on. I know. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> they had tours so. the whole day going right uh, in those cars. Officer, were, were you prepared for your augmentations, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> no more robo no robocops. Okay. Any other comments, concerns? Something from citizens. Any other um, elected officials have comments? Thank you. Not seeing any then. Happy Thanksgiving. And I guess that is all. If we don't have any other business, this meeting is adjourned.